The following video will take you on a tour inside the Pioneer Courthouse in downtown St. George, Utah, as well as explain how this city evolved differently than other cities, as America's Civil War was just beginning. For those that watch our typical BackroadsWest.com video tour, this one is a little different, where we were commissioned by the city of St. George to create a virtual video tour of this historic building. So expect a tour that's a little different than our normal ones. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to St. George and its historic Pioneer Courthouse. In the next few minutes, you're going to learn how this unique desert city came into being and how this courthouse became one of its cornerstones. Plus, you'll come along on a tour inside the courthouse as well as a walking tour of other nearby historic buildings. This virtual video tour, funded by the City of St. George Recreation Arts and Parks, or RAP tax, will take you into the Pioneer Courthouse so that you can experience some of its history, as well as take you on a virtual walking tour of the nearby historic buildings in downtown St. George. You'll see where these places are located and what there is to see when you come to visit. So, let's begin with how St. George got started. At the beginning of the American Civil War, Brigham Young, President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, realized that the war would create a shortage of both cotton and silk. He called 309 families to establish a cotton mission that would move to and settle in southwest Utah and grow cotton, trees for silkworm production, and grapes for winemaking. The settlers arrived in St. George in December of 1861. The town was laid out on a grid and based on what was called Joseph Smith's Plat of Zion. Joseph Smith was the founder of the church and this grid was used when other towns were founded. Individual home lots were clustered in the town center. Lots were randomly given out to the settlers when they picked out numbers from a hat. The lots were surrounded by fields held in common by the new landowners. Brigham Young asked that houses were built close to the streets so that larger vegetable gardens could be grown in the backyard. The blocks in the historic heart of St. George are 528 feet square with an area of 6.4 acres and with major streets being 90 feet wide. Seen in this original track map, each block was originally divided into eight lots. In addition to building a house on the lot, the new settlers also developed gardens and orchards, created pastures, pens and corrals for domestic animals, along with barns and granaries. None of those exist today. Some of the buildings you'll see were built as early as the 1860s, then more were built in the 1870s and 80s. As the 1900s rolled around, more buildings were built. Others were torn down to make room for commercial buildings for the slow budding downtown center of St. George. St. George became the seat of Washington County in 1863. By then, more and more people were heading south and populating the regions of southern Utah and Nevada and northern Arizona with very little representation of the law. Construction of the courthouse began in 1866 and was completed in 1870. The building has a full basement, which we're walking through now. It served as the county's jail for 10 years. After that, a new jail was built where the existing parking lot is now. When one walked in through the front door, they would be on the first floor where offices were used by the county government. The second floor consisted of a large room that served as both a courtroom and a schoolroom, as well as many public activities. 
Other interesting features include the 18-inch thick interior doors, old chandeliers, original paintings of Angel's Landing in Zion National Park and North Rim of the Grand Canyon, a security vault, exterior cornice work, and the cupola. The cupola was designed for hangings, though none were ever performed. Now, let's take a quick virtual tour through the courthouse. When the courthouse was in operation, one would enter it through the front door facing St. George Boulevard, like we are doing now. Nowadays, visitors to the courthouse enter it from the parking lot located on the back side of the building off of 100 East. Here you can see the back door and the main entrance that people use today. An elevator, as you can see here, has been added for people to access the courtroom upstairs. We are now walking into the rear of the courthouse, where you may encounter one of our docents. You can choose to look around or have one of the docents give you a tour. Along most of the walls around the courthouse, there are many historical pictures, each with their own story to tell. People often stop and take the time to look through them and read their descriptions. These pictures tell a lot of stories. As we saw before, you can walk upstairs to see the main courtroom. While climbing the stairs, you'll see more historical pictures of the St. George area. Upon reaching the top of the stairs, going straight takes you into the judge's chambers. Turning left takes you into the courtroom. In this view, we just ask the judge if we can approach the bench. So we will. When we turn to the judge's right, we see the jury box. And when we turn all the way around, this is the view the judge sees of the audience. Now we'll take a tour of the courthouse's basement, which, if you'll remember, is where the jail was located. You'll see the old courthouse sign that used to hang over the front entrance. As you might expect, the jail cells look dreary. It's almost like being in a dungeon. In one of the former sheriff's offices, you'll find a display depicting an infamous hanging that took place down the street in 1880. It was done by vigilantes, and the person that was hung murdered a well-liked mine foreman from Silver Reef, a nearby booming silver mining town. All right, enough of the courthouse. Let's take a quick look around its neighborhood. Along with this video of the courthouse tour, there are two accompanying virtual walking tour videos that will take you to both historical, residential homes and commercial buildings. The walking tour starts at the courthouse, so you can just leave your car parked here and head up the sidewalk to see places like the neighboring Pioneer Museum that showcases more of St. George's history. The old opera house, built in 1875, or some of the old residences that have been turned into businesses, such as art galleries, gift stores, and B&Bs. Along the way, you'll walk through places where the settlers first built their homes. Then, many years later, some of the houses were torn down and commercial buildings were erected. You'll also see where the first higher education facility was built. The Morbin Tabernacle that served as the city's community center and several businesses that were built around 1900 and still exist today when you visit. In the other videos, we'll show you a series of maps, including a three-dimensional map, thanks to Google Earth, so that it will be easy for you to find your way and return to the courthouse when you're finished. We hope you enjoyed this tour of the Pioneer Courthouse in downtown St. George, and perhaps it has enticed you enough 
to come down to see it with your own eyes. Thanks for coming along on the tour. The Pioneer Courthouse is open Monday through Saturday, but closed Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Admission is free. For more information, call 435-632-1215 or visit Facebook at Pioneer Courthouse STG.